Episode 4, here we come, I think. That's what we're on now. A little snow behind the logo, nice. Christmas in April, I guess. Well, if you guys haven't have guessed it, why don't we get started? Ahem. <coughs> Hello, welcome, my name is Ken Johnson, and welcome to our newest episode of The Man Who Played Batman. The parents, horrified by their disfigured child's appearance and behavior, threw him and his carriage into the Gotham River. Oh, it's a polar bear. The carriage floated down the storm drain and ended up in the Arctic world, part of Gotham, the old Gotham Zoo. There it was cared for off the darkness by huge emperor penguins. I wonder where this story's going. 33 years later. Christmas is approaching in the city of Gotham, but repeated sightings of a strange penguin creature have been nagging the metropolises of late. Nagging, weird word. The mayor is addressing the crowd in Gotham Plaza, completely unaware of a huge red gift box that is slowly moving towards the crowd. The box bursts open and Weird members of the Red Triangle Circus Gang careen through the terrified masses. Hello, Dana DeVito. So, yeah, um, for those of you guys who haven't guessed yet, um, I'm sure. Here we go. For those of you guys who haven't guessed yet, today we are playing the Super Nintendo Batman Returns. Um, based off of the critically acclaimed, though audience panned and still to this day kind of controversial, uh, Tim Burton sequel, Gotham is a hero that will save us all. A hero that bears strength and intelligence of under his dark mask. He is the mysterious Batman. He bravely stands up against all evil. The fragile peace that exists in Gotham City is reinforced by his presence. I actually like the writing in this. It's a little hammy and on the nose, but it's got its charm to it. However, there is a new player discovered. She used to be the quiet secretary of Max Shrek, a powerful businessman. Frustrated by the villainous Shrek, um, she is transformed into Catwoman. Oh, you guys get the idea. We're not going to go through the dialogue went on longer than I thought it did. I, once again, um, as with the rest of these games, um, I have not played this. So, we're going to have some fun. I think this is the same preview we saw. Nope, this is different. I don't know what it is, I just enjoy watching video games do the likeness of Michael Keaton. Oh boy! We got a Batmobile. Do we get to use it? No? Maybe later. Hoping later. I think you do. Okay, that makes sense. Hey, look, it's children. Woo! Side skull and beat him up! Oh, they're actually quite moving. Um, this is actually probably one of the better looking Batman games I've played so far, for sure. Um,. The screen's a little close, um, as far as beat-em-ups are concerned. But, um, man, it does look really good, and even, very specifically, it looks to the art style of the movie. Because, you know, obviously Batman Returns and ba uh, Batman, they do actually have pretty varying differently art styles. Um, you know, Batman's art style being a lot more simplistic, and Dark Knight Returns being a lot more Christmassy and a lot more, uh, gothic in its, um, in its portrayal. What? Gotham looking gothic? How strange! Yeah, I know what you mean. Is that, that clown got a bazooka? 
Yeah, he just not even called clown. He just called bazooka. Yeah, that guy's not gonna let. I'm not gonna let that guy alive. We got grabs. Nice. I've heard this actually is kind of a robust combat system to this whole thing if you can learn it. Oh boy. This is actually one of the higher rated Batman games I've seen. Um, I've checked a couple different lists trying to find games we're gonna uh, we're gonna play for this, but I'm sure we're gonna find some good ones. Fluidity Emotion, though, this is probably one of the better ones we've played. Oh, I get hit with a whoa! Those do a wallop. Note to self, don't get hit by a bazooka. Oh, man. Okay, they don't do as much as I thought, but... Alright, so... Batarangs are stun only in this game. I like the flipping mechanic, you know, the way they flip around and stuff like that. It's like, it's... I'm so used to other beat-em-ups, like, you know, like Final Fighter, like, oh my gosh. The little floating bats give you the... Holy cow! So you even use the aesthetic of the whole... Um, of the whole Christmas thing to actually introduce your enemy types. That is... That is kicking my butt, but that's actually really interesting. Don't want to get hit by that. Fire clowns. Oh, nice! Interactable environments! This is back on the Super Nintendo, like... It's nice to see people put in the extra effort. So, um, man, I wish I would have been able to do more for you guys, but oh boy, have I been busy. Like, working like 50 hours a week for the last several weeks. Um, I would do want to mention, um, once again, you know, the book's coming out. Um, it won't probably be on stores by the 15th, but I will have it available for s sale in my personal store and online uh, by the 15th. And I'm excited for the book finally coming out. Um, and I'm glad that we've got this, uh, you know, this little project here is a nice little promotional tool for, um, uh, for the book. I like the level transitions. My mechanics change. Oh, they just added new buttons. Change my buttons around. So now I'm flinging batarangs as my main mechanic rather than the punches. My gadget switched to the grapple gun. Man, the music in this is fantastic. So many of them. This level is so weird with the whole battering thing. They got an extra man though, so that's good. So I actually haven't watched Batman Returns in quite a while. I do need to rewatch it. I think that it's debatably one of the best of the. The original four. Um, it's definitely toward the top of my favorite Batman movies. I think I like Batman more, but I think that as a whole, Returns is a better, more interesting movie.
Stun Gun Clown. Interesting idea for a boss battle, but okay. So the reason I'm not doing damage. I gotta get him stuck in the wall or something. Hey, we got him. Bleh. I like how they call it scenes too. It games that whole movie vibe. The original guy I learned about this movie, this game from, um, he actually said that this game's short enough that he actually plays it every Christmas. Just Batman. The cowering lady saved by Batman has, was Selina Kyle, lonely secretary to Max Shrek, the most powerful businessman in Gotham. Pfft, he wishes. A mysterious creature known only as the Penguin has been spotted in Gotham's sewers. He's allied his allied with Max Shrek to destroy the mayor's rep reputation allowing himself to become the new mayor of Gotham City. Burn, baby, burn! I can't, I can't even remember what his voice sounded like as the penguin. I'm not even going to um, remotely attempt it. Battle in the streets of Gotham City. So, um, is that guy juggling? Gonna throw those at me or what? I just had fun watching all these, because, like, I know for the longest time you'll have, like, this reputation that, like, although there are the bad ones, don't get me wrong, we'll get to the bad ones. Um,. Not only, there's always been a reputation that before the Arkham games that all the bat the Ark all the got all Batman games suck, but I'm like I'm finding some decent ones here, and I'm happy to find them. And I'm, most of these I'm playing for the very first time, which is really fun. It's like I'm learning right along with my audience. I always love this enemy design he made for those things. Like they almost look like a pre. Uh, like a precursor to Mars attacks in a way. Those fat clowns are tough. Um, ah, man, it just and also like I like the fact that the um the the sort of the the art style they used for this is kind of interesting because it makes all the colors pop so much. I mean, cause there's obviously other Super Nintendo games based on Batman. Um, like, we played one of them yesterday, and like, although they're obviously getting their art styles from different source material, um, there's still an element of um, how they really take advantage of um, artistic styles to make this one work. And it's and I like the the pacing of this too. Like they're able to get this much material the first, you know. And we're still technically would in what would have been the first scene of the movie, or like I even the fact that they're even trying remotely to to mimic the um, the plot of the actual movie, because yeah, the the plot of the movie does actually have like a good fight scene every now and then, and you can stretch that out as you need. Like, it's not as incompatible as you might originally think. And you might as well take advantage. Did that guy just blow up? Oh, he just threw a bomb in my face. It just made here those ones look like Bozo. Remember Bozo the Clown? I swear, we had the weirdest trippy show shows as children. 
And I, I don't really do think that that's us. I mean, I know there's, you know, other networks had their shows, but man, did we have ours. You know, when we, I, that's why I'm so excited that Saturday Morning Fever is starting up, um, is to cover so many of those kind of shows. We actually might be doing an episode of that this afternoon. Um, hopefully there'll be another episode of that posted on this page very soon. Oh, you guys will just not die. There you go. But, yeah, the fluidity of motion. That is, like, something you don't see in a lot of uh, beat-em-ups, like, really actually see. And you think that'd be more of a main concern for a lot of people. You know, um, it, it does, in a way, does... This feels more like a precursor to... There's two games in particular, I would say, including this one, that I think are, like, actually look like good precursors to what, you know, something like Arkham Knight was able... You know, Arkham... Asylum was able to accomplish this and uh, Rise of Sin Tzu, which we might get around to. Um, assuming I still have my copy, I have to look around for it. Uh oh, they got me cornered. Now get to the end of the next level before you, before you die, because. There we go. Hopefully that's a checkpoint. Oh my gosh. That's funny. Oh, it's another one of these levels. How do you even fight that? They just bounce? Why do they bounce? What sense does that make? Uh. Oh shoot, who are we fighting this time? Oh, it's one of these. Uh, nothing like running away in a game without a run mechanic. Oh, and bouncing clowns the whole way. Well, hey, you can't ask for a better game over bonus than that. Oh, I'm such a weirdo. Darn it. How many bouncing clowns are there? Okay, so very briefly, because we've gotten enough into video game here, let's talk about the movie a second that this game is based off of. So, obviously, Dark Knight Returns was the sequel to 1989 Batman, um, which, you know, there's an NES version of this uh, movie tie-in as well, but, like, you know, I like the Batman NES game. We talked about it, but, like, don't get me wrong. There is something about playing a, you know, Batman game based on a movie that actually has something to do with the movie. It doesn't necessarily have to, but it's a nice change of pace after the last one took the, uh, took the individual route. Yeah, I know I'm kind of, like, sacrificing lives doing this, but this segment just does not look like it's going to be a lot of fun. Enemy variety is really nice. Um, they're still using that same aesthetic, but those bloom transitions are nice. Just like the oh boy, swords and bazookas, my two best friends. I don't know who does this. 
I don't remember. I wish it always no, Konami did this one. Um, the Batman NES game was done by Sunsoft, which um, it's kind of cool that they, you know, I like Warner Brothers Interactive, but it was kind of nice to see this in an era where they were kind of um, financing this stuff out, so you get a completely different company making these different games. Even just the ports like this. You know, I've played the, the Sega Super Nintendo Batman Returns game, um, and it's different. Uh, I definitely will say off the bat, I like this one way better than the Sega Genesis version. But it won't be until probably tomorrow or the next day we're actually going to start covering the crap. Like, um... Like, oh, you guys didn't think I was going to go away with not reviewing the, uh... Batman Forever and Batman and Robin, you know, Schumacher Super Nintendo games, did you? Oh, that's going to be fun! <laughs> Oh, so much fun. Um, I might actually review Catwoman the movie, the game, if I can get it working. Uh, that might be my grand finale, is doing a full-on let's play of Catwoman the movie, the game. And if I do that one, I will get through the whole game, one way or the other. Maybe not in one sitting, but I will get through it. Um, actually, not even part of this, but eventually me and Travis Steffens from Bon Voyage are going to be doing an Arkham City Let's Play. Um, doing the whole game. I deflected the bomb! Some days you just can't get rid of a bomb. Oh my sh... Yeah, is it just me? Maybe it's the hair thing, you just look... He looks like a demented Bozo the Clown. Man, it is crazy how much they used to do... Like, remember when clowns weren't scary as hell? Or at least, like, when media didn't treat them like they are scary as hell? Because, I mean, it used to be like an inside joke-ish kind of thing of... Did I just get a crash? Hold on. I did not crash, I just had a little bit of a mishap there. Um, yeah, we're like, everyone used to say, oh, it's clowns, it's funny, and then like, now it's almost like a self-aware thing. Of, you know, people actually take advantage and use the scary clown thing too often to their own advantage. I mean, to be fair, it's kind of always been there, because I mean, that's technically how Joker was created, um, to an extent. Now, uh, because Joker was created... Ah, uh, okay, because Bob Kane did not come up with the idea for Joker. Um, one of the guys working on the show had brought him the picture of a vaudeville actor from a show he had watched um, with a clown with the funny aesthetic to him. You know, it was kind of creepy looking or had like the Joker jawline that we all know. I just like how the boss is just kind of sitting there waiting for me to finish up with these guys. That's what the special attack is actually for, is for... Oh boy, it's a strong man! Oh my goodness! How much damage do you do, strong man? Holy crap! Oh, man, this guy's tough. Well, this just seems to be working. Oh, boy. We go. Bleh. I just love the way old school and video game enemies die.
Batman's triumphant victory over the Fred Tri- the Red- the Fred Triangle. Circus Gang is short-lived as the Penguin appears to taunt Batman. You're not the mayor. Things change, don't really think. Don't really think you'll win, do you? I can't, I don't know as things change. Yeah, I cannot do Keaton. Meow. Boom, giant explosion. One of my favorite moments of the whole movie, Shrek's department store blows up. Catwoman escapes to the safety of a nearby rooftop. So we're actually a decent way through the movie at this point. We only played through the first scene, but the rest of it's kind of there. On the Prowl. We're gonna play a little bit of this level and then we're gonna call it. Uh, only because we're having so much fun this time compared to uh, the other ones. Not that I didn't have fun with the other ones, but man, I just actually like want to play this. <laughs> like, this is fun. In a way, this kind of reminds me of the, oh, you can fall off the edges. This kind of reminds me of the, um... Oh, no, 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 no! <laughs> Woo! Woo-hoo! Almost died there. Okay, so they only pop through the lit windows. Or I could be wrong. I don't know why necessarily they do these levels that kind of give you the second, you know, attack stream. I was gonna say though, the... So I just got some interesting platforming going on here. And death. If I game over again, we're probably gonna call it, but... Oh boy! 